Hello, I am Saponini Colvin, and I'm going to tell you about the invariance of knot lattice homology. It shouldn't be surprising based on the title that the main idea and theorem discussed here is that knot lattice homology is invariant for knots on which it is defined, i.e. generalized algebraic knots. However, before we go into the invariance part, we're going to discuss more about the on which it's defined part. Generalized algebraic knots are links of singularity, i.e. boundaries of cone-like neighborhoods for curves inside normal algebraic surfaces. It, the picture we have on the right is for an algebraic knot where the normal complex surface is C2 and we have a complex curve inside it with a singularity with we, we can assume is at zero. And we can look at where that curve intersects S3, which gives us the algebraic knot. Note that we also can have algebraic links, but we care specifically in this case about when they are knots. To get generalized algebraic knots, we then allow the normal complex algebraic services to be more complicated. And so the cone-like neighborhood over that singular point can be more complicated and we can get th three manifolds other than S3. However, we still have this complex surface with a singularity and a curve that's potentially more singular and that picks out the knot in question, the generalized algebraic knot. The input for knot lattice homology is a resolution of the singularity. This is a space and a map so that away from the singular point, it, the map's an isomorphism. And above the singular point, we have some complex curves, i.e. topological surfaces, that spread things apart so that way it's now smooth that the surface should be smooth, the curve should be smooth, and the way that the special curve interacts with the exceptional curves that sit above the singularity should be nice. This gives us a negative definite four manifold, think plumbing, with a preferred basis for the second homology. This information is encoded using a graph with integer weighted vertices and a single unweighted vertex. The integer weighted vertices represent the resolution. Here we just have single weights. You can have other information to keep track of genus. The weights here represent twisting an Euler number. And then the unweighted vertex picks out the curve inside it. So we care about not lattice homology because of how it fits into a broader picture with Fleur type invariance. In particular, for three manifolds, we have Haggard Fleur homology. And then on the lattice side, we just have lattice homology. For knots, we might care about knot Fleur homology, which the knot lattice homology plays a similar role to building off of lattice homology. We care about these because of how they've fact computation. The Fleur side has finitely generated chain complexes, which is good. We like finite. However, the differential is hard to compute because it involves pseudo holomorphic curve counts. On the lattice side, the differential is very explicit. Yay. The trade-off though is that it is a very big chain complex that is a priori infinitely generated. One can, all, can make it find finitely finite chain complexes that support the interesting things, but you have to really look at the forest instead of the tree. Now, this, a sketch of the proof for invariance. One first finds a set of moves, in our case, blowups and blowdowns, that preserve the knot type and get you between any two presentations of the same knot. Think right a Meister moves, but for graphs instead of knot projections. Then I find chain homotopy equivalences between for the before and after for these moves. 
so that we have that not last module is actually preserved under them. 